Enthusiasts, it's just Larry coming at you. Uncle Larry, Starship Trooper, been a while. I've been out uh, hobnobbing, but I'm back home in my small, meager existence now. I just hope everybody's doing good out there. I just figured you were, it's been a while since you had some real Cleveland in your life, so I'm bringing it to you. Hey, you know. Of all the uh, cool things that you sweethearts have sent in the mail, you know, to, I think Uncle Larry could use this. That's probably the thought you have. This thing could be my top five things that anybody's ever sent. Look at this. Look at this. Come on, man. A flag from the early 70s, Genesis, Charisma Records. My friend Travis Talbert sent that. What a sweet fellow. Isn't that cool, man? Kind of smells like the uh, back seat of the 1977 Olds Cutlass I had in high school. Ah, four doors rusted to pieces. You know that, that Cleveland rust? That's a special kind of rust. <laughs> You know, these, these poor people up in Cleveland, they they worked their whole lives in an insurance job or something to, to get a brand new car, right? And they, you know, this is some of them, not all of them. Uh, they work, get this brand new car, and then the thing's rusted to pieces in three years because of the salt they put on the roads. Oh, Lord. See, that's the thing. You don't want, you don't, in the South, you never get any rust on the cars out here. It's quite nice. But you got mosquitoes. Big mosquitoes. And you find all kind of crazy insects in your house when you're not expecting it. Um, let's see, what's been going on? Um, uh, the string change video. Boy, that got some people up in arms. <laughs> the st okay, maybe some people don't understand what I'm saying. You don't have to. You just stick it through. And you just grab a bit. And wrap it around a little. And you grab it and tighten it and you just fucking turn it. I just, I was sitting here this morning thinking about all the potential fortunes and gigs that I've lost. Because I wasn't tying them, tying them in a knot like I was supposed to in my life. You know, I've cumulative losses. I've been thinking about that. But yeah, I feel like a lot of you all, you all um, agree with me on this Um uh, that the strings don't need to be locked. Here's why, because when you go to take them off, you can't fucking get them off. They're, they're wrapped so tight around the post and there's nothing to grab onto. You can't just stick like some pliers or some needle nose cutters in there because you can't even get to it. So you got to take some sort of dental tool and uh, then you pry loose the, try to get enough of that knot out so you can, you can get enough of it to cut, right? What I'm saying is that life is already hard enough. I mean, you got cancer. You got all kinds of physical ailments that are going to come and get you. Liver problems. Why make it even harder by putting the strings on like that? On this, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But, you know, people do things the hard way a lot. I notice that in life. I sometimes do things the hard way. I'll realize, you know at an advanced age that all along I could have been doing something differently, way easier. You guys ever notice that? It's always eye-opening. You know, because I think for every one thing in life that you really reach 
Well, I feel like there's only time in... I think I've talked about this in some past episodes. I feel like there's only time in one lifetime to reach expert level on one thing. Maybe two if you're really a, a, you know intelligent person. But then the rest of it, you're at the mercy of all the other experts in all the fields that you know nothing about, right? For example, I always say you gotta have a good air conditioning guy. You always have to have a good doctor. Look, look how bad, or a good mechanic, good lawyer, you gotta have all that shit. So, um, like for example, how bad an air conditioning guy could fuck you over if you wanted to, if you don't have somebody that's trustworthy? What the hell do we know? They could tell us anything, sure. It needs this, it needs that. Yeah, 4,500 bucks, sure, here, take it. But if you find somebody trustworthy, they'll take care of you, right? But, oh uh, man, that's a racket. But like, I've studied this guitar my whole life, right? And I still, I don't still consider myself expert level, but I'm pretty close, I suppose. I've given my whole life to it. I do know this, this is a Harmony Meteor from the 60s. Pretty cool, you know. I don't know why, but I decided to go to the wall on this one. I got it for cheap, and uh, and then I put more money into it, making it a guitar, than I did actually paying for it. I did the whole Larry thing, frets, bridge, all of it, you know. But these are really cool. You've had them. These pickups are great, but you always find with these old with these old um, the Armands that. 99% of the time on a guitar like this, the neck pickup is always way more powerful than the bridge pickup. It's like a thing. You'll find that every time. So I know there's really no way to fight it. You can jack them up. I guess the key would be to lower that neck pickup a good bit. That's the way to do it. But I never do that. I got my coffee going here. Um, people have asked me how I like my coffee. A little, little half and half, just cream please. That's all you need. But I don't really have anything important to tell you today. I'm just checking in. It's been a while. That gig out in L.A. was fun. Um, it was cool playing with those guys. Robert Randolph is a super sweet dude. Very musical cat. I never met him before. Very cool to hang out with him. Um, Steven Stills was there. I, I talked to him just for a minute. Um, let's see. Who else is all hanging around there? Billy Gibbons is there, who, I, who I've talked about in my previous video. Man, big fan. Um, cool stuff, but uh, now I'm back to just doing sessions and all that stuff back home. I went to a happy hour party last night, met some new friends. Nashville's a cool town, man. If you're thinking about moving here, don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. It, it's, <laughs> it's a great place, man. And even though it's overcrowded now, and even though it's traffic and everything's too expensive now it's still a great place man um lots of cool opportunities for musicians here you know i've had people email me and say things like larry i'm th I'm thinking about moving to nashville you know any advice you could give us should i do it should i not my first question is how old are you i mean that don't mean that like in a dick way at all i'm just seriously asking how old are you because you know, I'm not saying that you can age out, but I am saying that it takes a minute to get some shit going. I think people that expect to just come here and start taking over immediately, they're, they're, they're not, they're, they're in for a surprise. But if you got time to sort of immerse yourself in the scene and make connections and you can do something. That's the only reason I ask about the age. So if I'm, if you're one of those people that I've done that to, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just being honest. Um, it takes time. You know, I came here when I was 24, right? And um, I had, I was young enough. I should have came earlier, to be honest. But, but I was young enough to have time to sort of, you know, fit into the thing. Because it takes years to get where you want to go. You know, I mean, I mean, all these guys that have become huge stars. You know, like. Keith Urban and stuff like that. I mean, these guys were kicking around Nashville for fucking years before they ever got anything going, you know? I mean, I'd see those guys everywhere. And then overnight, they're hugely successful, and you're like, wow, man, he made it. 
But of course they made it because they worked their ass off and they and they paid their dues and they did all the things that you're supposed to do, right? Um, good on you, Keith, if you're watching. Um, you know, it just takes time and you got to, you know, you develop connections, right? And uh, I do feel like if you are a badass musician and, you know, you're a lifer, if you don't go to a music city, you're, you're doing yourself a great disservice. If you if you live in Iowa or something and you and you're badass, if you're the best guy in Iowa, you're not really gonna you're never gonna get anything going out of there because there's just no opportunities in places like that. You know, I mean, they're great places. I would love to live in Iowa, but not as a professional musician. You know what I mean? There's lots of places I look at and go, God, I'd love to live there. But if I then I always the brutal realization that I have to be a professional mu musician always creeps back into my brain. For example, the other day I drove out to Clarksville. I think, yeah, Clarksville. It's like an hour away from Nashville. And I was thinking, man, it's a cool city. Beat up old city, kind of just like me, you know? And I was like, I could live here. And then I thought, well, fuck. And then I would never get any gigs, you know? But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about all that. I, I don't know. Uh, but I feel like if you don't go to New York or LA or Nashville, you're not really giving yourself a chance, you know? I remember I had to really talk myself into getting out of here when I lived in Cleveland, you know. Um, I knew I wasn't ever going to get anything going up there. And um, I should have left when I was like 18 or something, but uh, I couldn't get the nerve up, you know. I remember talking myself into it by saying, look, I'll go for one year, and if I can't get something going, I'll come back. I can always come back, right? That was the only way I could talk myself into it. I'm not much of a risk taker, late bloomer. Not the sharpest knife in the drawer here, you know? Uncle Larry. That's about it for now. I don't know what the hell I'm even talking about. Um, I guess I just wanted to show you this Genesis flag. That's really the whole point of this video. <laughs> All right, you guys. See you later.